Welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this week we will be talking to you about regex and modifications in Koha. We have the wonderful Annika joining us from the Data Migrations team. Hi, hey, Annika. Hi. So why don't we kick off this week's Monday Minutes by talking a little bit just about what regex is. So for those of you thinking, what even is regex and how does that pertain to Koha? Annika is going to talk to us a little bit about it, give us a high level overview, and then we'll jump into actions in Koha. So regex, um, regex is short for regular expressions. Typically, this is like a se sequence of characters um, that define a search pattern. So let's say that you're trying to search for, I don't know, um, a name, a string, or a, like a string of numbers. Regex is like a bunch of characters that um, will define that particular um, string. And it's very exact, correct, um, Annika? So if you were looking yeah. for that, it will search the entire document. It's not going to be smart to say, oh, that they don't mean that language. And it is specific to capitalization, right? Yeah. It's, right. it's very specific. So it's case sensitive. So depending on what you're searching, you have to be very strict with it. Yeah, perfect. So this was... Um, this was brought to us by one of our partners. They wanted to for us to show them a little bit about how to use regex in Koha because you can see that little example when you maybe go into batch item modification. So we're gonna pop over to that and just give you a good um, example of two examples of how you can use that. And of course, if you're a partner of ours, please reach out if, if you have an, a really good, um, interesting one you need help with, we can certainly help doing your regex for you. So this is really helpful. So let me just pop over to the tools and go into our batch item modification. And I'll pull up, of course, batch item would mean you would probably want more than one, but I'm just gonna start with one um, barcode. And so we can see where that regex that we're talking about so much lives. So you may see it here when you are looking at the batch item modification. Now, something to, to mention, I know that there are libraries that would like to modify their call numbers, and this would seem like a good opportunity to do that. And you can see there is a regex is not the option that's not there currently right now. You may see this on your library website, or you may not, depending on if you're using that call number browse plugin in your framework. We love the call number browse. We've had a Monday Minutes on call number browse. So we don't want you to get rid of it. It is coming in it in the next release that will allow you to have both regex to call your numbers and that call number browse still connected. And that's good. That's really good, really good. Now, a good example, if I clicked that regex option, I have some good examples. Annika, do you wanna talk about what this, this little area means? Yeah, so you see that a little S. Um, so the regex pattern is the pattern that you're searching for. And then the regex replacement is the um, what you're going to replace that particular string with. And then the last part, you see I and G. I means that you're only, um, it's basically a match. So you're only replacing whatever that match is. G is more global, meaning like the universal string. So um, typically what I'd suggest is use the I because it's like, it, it strikes the regex. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, one example that I had um, from in a partner ticket was they wanted to batch edit a public note and add more to it. So they had some text in the public note and they didn't want to get rid of it they wanted to add on to that public note. And in that, that example, Annika, what do I do? So for that example, um, if you want it to add on to that public note, you do um, either a caret symbol for the beginning or a dollar sign for the end of the string. Perfect. And the caret sign is above you, usually above your six. So shift and then six would bring you that carrot, which you can kind of see on my screen. And that would say, put what I'm going to put in this replacement in front of what's already in my public notes. If I wanted to put it at the end, I would add the dollar sign. So I'll use the dollar sign and let's look at what I, my example is, the Mrs. Pickle Wiggle books. 
So my public note up here, if you can see it, is local author. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. You think I've got it right, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So let's head over and look at what I have accomplished in my first attempt of Red X, Reg X. Ooh, perfect. Probably I would want to put a space, Annika, do you think next time I do that? Should I do yeah. dollar sign and then the replacement, I would just do space and then start the text? Yes. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So that's a great example. I have a question. Just, yeah. Can you use it like a dash? So like, let's say we were adding local author dash, and then maybe we're going to add the county or municipality. Could you add dashes in there or would a dash cause an issue if we did dash? I think for, if you're looking for like a pattern that, that, that has a dash, you have to escape the dash, but for the replacement, I think you can just put a dash in there. Okay. 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 So That's let's good. try. Let's just do dollar sign. And then I'm going to do a dash here and then say um, Franklin for whatever reason. Yeah. So, oh, I'm going to do a space as well. So space dash Franklin, that should also append to the end with a space, a dash, and then that word Franklin. Perfect. Let's open that up again. Dun, da, da, da. There. Yeah, yeah perfect. That works okay, exactly. That's great. That yeah. works exactly how you would like it to work. Okay. Now let's try like just the replacement. So if I wanted to find a word in a field and then replace it with another one. Um, when we were talking, you know, sometimes you have a very specific material specified thing to say, send to Carol. So like Carol is in charge of ILL and Carol no longer works here or Carol's moved to another department and we want to be identifying the exact person we're looking for versus having to go, well, it says Carol, but we actually send it to Barbara. Um, so I went ahead and um, ran a report to find all my materials specified that say the special um, send to, I think, Carol. Um, I'll show you my SQL just in case. So I'm looking for all my materials that I have sent to Carol. And I love batch options. So I can go right to that batch item modification. If you wanna go to batch item modification from your SQL, make sure you're using item number. Annika reminded me of that. <laughs> Good job, Annika. Okay, so we can see all of our materials specified to say send to Carol. And now we wanna say send to Barbara. Here is where we would put send to Carol, Annika, or would we do the full, just put Carol? Put Carol. Carol. Mm -hmm. And then our replacement is Barbara. Do I need to put anything in here? Would I put I or no? I put I. Yes, okay. Oops. No. Um, luckily, luckily that we have nothing that has anything else ex except for Carol. Mm -hmm. But if we did have other things in the material specified, wherever regex found Carol, whether it was a, you know, it would replace yeah. it with Barbara. So it could be something to, to be aware of. Okay. And then we're gonna hit save. This is so awesome. So yeah. much power. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, and look at that. Send to Barbara. Cool. Um, this is fantastic. This gives users a lot of functionality and power that they can go ahead and easily manipulate their items um, using that regex. Annika, thank you for joining us for Monday Minutes. Happy to be here. Yay! And thanks to our partners for some suggesting it. Yeah, this is absolutely what we're here for to help y'all. So let us know if there's any other topics you want us to cover and have a great week.